A new printer entered the workshop. Kidi X Plus 3. Very big package. Let's see what's in. Even if there were some damages visible outside of the packaging, inside there was everything okay, no damage at all. So Kidi does a good job for the packaging. Here we got it, the key X3 Plus. Everything is nice, safe with the cable ties. Looks nice and clean. And this was also in the package. Some PLA Rapido power cable, some rubber foots, spatula, glue, the second hot end for abrasive materials like carbon fiber reinforced filaments, then our filament holder and quick start guide with USB stick. Yeah, let's pull it together. Everything that has to be done now was removing for cable ties on the side and also for screws. Everything was marked nice and clearly that it was easy to find. Also the print head has to be freed from some cable ties and carton. And then there was also some piece of styrofoam in between. And now the printer was ready. All the packaging material is removed. Let's take a closer look. We got a lot of fans here. This is the area heater. I think it's a ceramic heater. Then we got an auxiliary fan there. And we got a fan, I think, for the, for the part cooling here that goes up there and blows on the level of the nozzle. Got our hot end there. XY view from the top and that's the back you can see for the lane cable power cable 800 watts that's a lot here we can see the electronic from the display all metal rods let's take a look underneath here we can see the two power converters I think to 24 volts and the drive for the z-axis nice and clean everything looks good here we can see the x plus 3 right between the kitty x max 3 and the bamboo lab it's right the mid size and just started up and he's asking if we lose the screws and remove all the packaging and now just these two styrofoam pieces were left under the heat bed so we can go to writer now the heat bed is heated i did some changes for the filament spool installation normally it's right behind but for me this is really hard to reach so i bought this one this is um, just a holder, which is good sealed. And here we got the temperature and moisture. And I use a little bit longer PTFE tube that it is uh, long enough to go from the print head all through here, just into the case. So it's super easy for me to reach and change the spools. I did the same on the other kitty. And this is a little oven, just, <laughs> just to know you. This is for uh, drying the nylon materials. I will test this later on. I was bonding this filament holder with a um, hot glue gun. This was really easy and I think looks nice. And it's also possible to remove the whole part without any damage. Also here. Here I also put on this uh, wood plate, but this is more caused, uh, caused by the oven which waits a little bit. Now the leveling process starts. This time we have another probe. Seems to be an inductive probe. So what should we do? Now we use... Now using the special paper for build plate leveling. Just put it in between. And now manual bringing the nozzle down or the bed up this has to be done just one time and the rest does the printer itself now 
is going through all his leveling points. These are 16 and that's the bed leveling. The bed is at the moment at 60 degree. Heat it up to get the best results. So automatic leveling is ready. Now the input shaper is starting. They are making some noise. And the X plus 3 starts printing. It's a part from PTEG. And this works really nice with this dry case. It was super easy to install and we can see inside it's much less humidity than outside. We can see here is 64 in the room and into the box is just 38. And this is also a bit heated up by the top of this chamber. The heat bed has now 70 degree and printed is with 250 degree. I just used the preset from Kitty in the Kitty slicer and this works really nice. Super fast setup. So here we are in the Kitty slicer and this time I want to print something special. This is the front section from the JRM1 and this is not a sandwich with gyroid in between like normal. This is just an outer shell and rips inside and it is printed in a so-called waste mode. It's uh, spiralized. So there is a non-stop printing and no support. And here we can see how the nozzle is moving. So here it starts. We have two walls and it prints the ribs and all this in one move. And it was sliced. It should take about two hours, 24 minutes, 71 grams. It will be printed from PTEG this time. And I just used the presetted uh, profile from this uh, slicer, from this key slicer. Here up there, we can see the IP address. It is connected via wireless LAN and I just sent it uh, on Wi-Fi and let's take a look on the printer. And here we are at the Kitty X Plus 3. There is this nice little picture as preview. We can see it, JRM 1B nose with inner ribs. And let's take a look on the filament. Like I showed you before, I used this closed container. In this room we had at the moment 19 degree, 63 percent humidity and into here we can see this there same temperature but just 16 percent so it's super dry and this is very important for PTEG for a good quality that we don't have stringing or any, any bubbles from the water in the material. This was a little work I have to install this new bound tube it's about one meter long, so you can't use the one that is already installed. This would be too short, but nevertheless, was no big deal. And now the kitty is heating up. See, bed temperature will rise to 70. And let's see how this will work. So the print starts. First layer looks quite nice. Take a look from here. Yeah. And these are the default settings from the Kidi uh, profile for the PTEG. 250 degree on the nozzle, 70 on the bed. Till now this works super nice. It's not loud this printer, I would say. Does a good job. So the Kidi is still printing the bottom plate. Quality is not that bad. There is some keys in front here. Let's see what happens there. But I'm just uh, just a bit wondering because normally there is no bottom plate. There is just a frame as a part that touches the the heat bed. I don't know why. This is added here. Take a look in the slicer. But nevertheless, it's a good sign that the leveling works and also the all over quality is okay. So no problem at all. We can see temperature rises a little bit. Also here 20 degree. So this is also <laughs> a little oven for the material while printing. I think I found a reason. 
in the slicer we can see if, uh, everything is okay. There is this bottom plate and I think this is caused of the infill. It's by it's at 100%. Okay, but nothing changes. Now it's on zero. And we still got this uh, ground plate. And first after this, there starts the object. So I also was now minimizing the amount of wall lines and also upper and lower surfaces. But we still have this nine layers of a bottom then this is nine bottom layers don't understand this really why this is done it's not big problem but nevertheless uh, i would like to know why <laughs> why this happens now this part is growing really fast in this vast mode but you can see there is some trouble without support this doesn't look that perfect But let's see, let it grow. Working with the Kili slicer is quite simple. We just take our part, per drag and drop, put it in here, then mark it, put it per snap placing in the correct position. So there are some issues on the part. One side looks good from this rip there behind, other side not that good. So what I did is put the temperature a bit low, 5 degree lower to 245 and also I maximized the two ventilators. This is direct on the nozzle and we got this part cooler. This is here on the side, there it comes out and this is a very big fan, here's the inlet the outlet so now here is a lot of wind the the last one would be see it this is um, a, a circular fan but i think this makes no sense now this would be just for all over heating um, the chamber but at the moment i think we need more part cooling that these overhangs come out more nice Ah, let's see what happens. Also, the outer surface is not that perfect. Here it is better. Let's have a look on the speed we are printing here. Print speed is 180 millimeter per second. So quite fast and the accelerations uh, from 5,000 to 10,000 so I think this is fast as possible the movement speed 480 millimeter per second yeah I would say the quality increases no more failure in the ribs the outer wall is still a bit rough let's let this doesn't do his thing So as I'm still not that happy with the quality, I was setting the print speed to 70%. That's the last thing I can do. It is getting still better and better. And I think this also depends on the material that is used. Still not bad, these are very simple. And this is still quite fast, even with the 70% print speed. Let's see. So now I'm at 60% speed, 248 degree nozzle temperature. And all fans are activated at 100%. And the quality is rising, it's better and better. You can, you can see at the first there was big trouble on these ribs. And then less and less. But they are, they are really quite thin, so this is not an easy part to print. Also, the outer surface is getting nice. So, let's say the key does a nice job and it's also even quite fast. It's a big part, now we are on 73% and the key is finished. 
this is pure gas mode. That's on the road, no roots anymore. It's very interesting how the printer slows down. It's still in race mode. You see how slow it is moving. Print is ready, three hours for this big part. Let's have a look. At the end, where it's just uh, this glass mode, the surface is much better than the other, but it's still not bad. I would say it's still not bad. You can see the the rib slightly but when you touch it it's really, really smooth and it's quite quite solid some words to the greedy kitty print plate this pie plate this is quite rough normally this was on both sides but one side I was sanding down with this excenter grinder or sander with 120 grit this works quite nice now it is much smoother Sometimes this is important and needed and sometimes this is the better way, so we got both. And I was also using 3D Lack, 3D Lack, 3D Lack for good adhesive and this works quite perfect. This was not too much, not too less. I'm happy with the result of this and also the quality for PTEG is not the easiest material. The ribs there came out quite nice just with these very big overhangs. There, there were problems, but with, with tuning of the temperature and also the print speed, it became better, I would say. And also, also the outer surface is okay. I think it was also a good choice to keep the material dry. Don't see any bubbles in there when you take a closer look. 14% humidity seems to be good in this container. My conclusion to the Kidi X Plus 3 is quite positive. It works right out of the box, even with some not so easy to print materials like PTEG. It was easy to install. The Wi Fi works from the first moment. Also, the KD slicer is easy to use and very important is that there are preset print profiles for the most common material so it's super easy to slice the slicer is based on Cura so if you are familiar with Cura you will don't have any problems with this KD slicer also the Wi-Fi works super easy from the first moment so you don't have to use any SD card yeah I would say this is a sum up for the Kidi and if you're interested in this printer you will find a link underneath in the video description and I wish you many nice prints and we see us in the next video. Bye bye!